What is going on everyone and welcome back to the channel here. I thought I'd do a video on a topic that is, well, I see a few videos out there, but I think it's a topic that can be overlooked, especially when you're just starting out on this whole uh, video creation thing. So let's just jump right into it. A good starting point for organizing and setting up your project files. Okay, so I've switched angles here because primarily what you're gonna be looking at is my screen recording here. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk you through uh, basically from start to finish what it looks like organizing a, uh, an entire project. I'm not gonna edit anything super spectacular, but I at least will be able to show you what it looks like to organize your files and then bring everything into Premiere and then export it and what that looks like. Because the one thing that I didn't put a lot of time to in when I was just starting out was file organization. And it created so many problems for me. <laughs> I would have so much trouble just finding a simple asset um, and just, it's all about taking your time and being patient because a lot of the times when I'm working on a project, um, you don't immediately have a vision or you don't have like a song or all your assets gathered. You're actively, while you're working on the project, you're on Artlist, Motion Array, whatever you've got, you're on there and uh, you're looking for assets and you're downloading things, trying them out. So your downloads folder can get really cluttered and it's important to not just drag and drop things from that uh, directly into your timeline, but rather taking the time to um, put it in your project folder, organize it, and it goes a long way. So let's just start with simply um, creating a new folder here. I will bring it over here. We will name it test project. Uh, my caps lock was on, so test is gonna be capitalized. But anyways, we're gonna get in here and I'm on Mac. And so I know it's a little bit different on PC and other things and I'll be using Premiere Pro uh, and I know others are either, either in Final Cut or um, DaVinci Resolve, whatever. Everything in here is pretty much going to translate over to whatever editing software you use. Um, I think a few things might just be different here and there. So, um, but the principles remain the same. So when you have your first, when you have your project set up, the first thing I do is create a video folder. And then depending on how many cameras you've got, I'll go into the video folder and create um, other folders of each camera that I have. So in this instance, I have an a7S III and an a7S III. And so I'll create those subfolders and then that way, whatever um, footage I have from each of those cameras, I'll go in there, drop them in the air accordingly. And that way I know which asset is from which camera. Not that it matters a whole lot. Um, you can also just create a video uh, folder and then drop everything in there if you're only working with one camera or two. When you start working with three cameras, it gets a little, um, it gets a little money. So for instance, if say I also also had my drone, I'll just label it drone. I don't really worry about which drone I have, but, and then same thing if you have, let's say a GoPro. This helps tremendously. This alone, if you can get in the habit of doing this, just creating subfolders for each of your cameras, that's gonna help you out tremendously. Especially when you get into your project and you're trying to find which, if you have everything just dropped into one video folder um, and you know, okay, I'm looking for this clip that I shot on this camera and you have to scroll through all this, all that footage and it's kind of just a mess. This will help speed up your workflow tremendously. Next folder I like to make is my music folder because uh, if I can spell it right. Music folder is pretty important too because sometimes I have a specific track picked out for a video, especially if it's a video I've been sitting on for a while and I already know that that music's gonna go with it. But a lot of times if I'm working with clients, um, I don't have any idea what song is gonna go for whatever video I'm working on. So I will spend quite a while <laughs> surfing through a bunch of different songs. And if I like it, I'll go ahead and download it um, and then just drop it into the music folder. And then that way I just have all the songs that I liked or that jumped out to me in one spot and it's really easy to just handle from there. Folder number three is going to be assets. This is going to be for like transitions that you download. It's gonna be like lens flares, other things. Um, now this, I don't use as much. I like to put it there anyway, just to have it. Uh, a lot of the times I pull assets that I've already downloaded and I have a specific folder in my little video shop folder. That's like where all my um, other assets are. And so I've got that organized in a way to where I can just kind of pull it into each project. And so it's not that big of a deal to have an assets folder, but I like to put it there for anything that I do download. Cause like I said, um, one thing that I still do to this day is I'll download something and I'll just leave it in my downloads folder um, on my computer and then I'll just pull it in there uh, or pull it directly into the project from the downloads folder. Uh, and it, it's just a mess that way. I do that because I'm lazy, but 
you, what you should do is you should have a dedicated assets folder. And again, you can go in here and you can create other subfolders and uh, for all kinds of different assets that you have, like transitions or flares. Um, it just, it really depends on what kind of project you're working on. So it's a good idea to have that folder. I don't use it a whole lot because if you can create yourself a library of all of the assets that you do have um, legally mm -hmm, and just utilize that library because um, that will save you time overall. But like I said, a lot of the times, especially if you're working with clients, you don't have all the assets you want and so you have to go and get new ones. So definitely uh, include that assets folder. Um, next folder I like to do are project files. This is where you are going to, um, if I again can spell, uh, this is where you're going to put the location of the project file when you open Premiere or whatever editing software you have. This is where you're gonna load all those files. Another important thing is this file, because if you put it somewhere like within the project folder, you're gonna get all those um, generated files from Premiere, from Final Cut, whatever you have. It's just gonna generate a bunch of project files that honestly just kind of messy up and, and clutter up your, your project folder. And it's nice to just have all of those in a dedicated spot. Also helps your um, whole entire project just run smoother, uh, believe it or not. Last but not least, and you don't have to do this one per se, but it's another one that I like to do is exports. When you're going, when you're done with your project and you're going to export it, you can export it um, just in the project folder uh, and that works too. And then you'll have it like down here um, or you can have a dedicated folder where all your exports are because you are not going to be exporting your project just once. Never happens. I mean, it does maybe if you don't wanna go back and fix something, but um, nine times out of 10, you're gonna export once and you'll see something that you have to fix or and you have to go back in there. And so uh, that's why this folder is also, I think, important um, and like I said unless it's a, a quick project like a reel or something uh, that you know you're only going to export like a couple times you don't necessarily have to have one of these folders but again I would just do it because you're going to end up filling that up quite a bit another folder that you can include would be uh, photos and that's one that I would include but it's also one that you can throw into assets anyways and it's one that I end up just kind of throwing into assets so you can have it out if you want um, or you can have it in assets either one but this right here is going to set you up for success with setting up, working through, and all the way to exporting your projects. I'm not gonna get in this too much because this could be a separate video in and of itself, but I wanna just show you real quick what the whole process looks like of setting up a project, exporting it, and such. So you opened up whatever software you use. This is gonna be completely different depending on, you know, again, what, what editor you use. But uh, for, we're in Premiere right now, so we'll hit new project. Uh, right here, we're going to, put whatever we want, so test project. Uh, there we go, type that in. And then right here is where you choose your location. So we'll go to desktop, test project, open that, go into project files, click on that, you don't open it, uh, just select it, hit choose, and then boom, hit create. And so that's gonna do its thing. Here we are, we're in Premiere. And then if you notice, if we go back to this, uh, this project, test project, and we open up project files, boom, there you go. There, there's the project right there. Nice tucked away and there's nothing, there's no garbage on the outside. Okay, so I threw some media into our test project. So if we go into import media to start, um, it's automatically, it's not automatically going to open up to the, uh, the test project. We have to go find that first. So we'll, once we do though, once you go back to import things, it'll automatically open up. So we'll hit onto test project and then I need to get my A7S3 videos in here. Uh, boom, hit that import, voila, and it's already in a file or in a folder. So we click on here and then we have our footage. This is just a shot of my car that I randomly found. I don't even know if it was shot in the S3, but here it is. Same thing for if we want to go get some music for our video, um, see it automatically open into the video part of our test project. We'll go back to the test project, click on music and import, and voila, we have our music folder in here with all of our music. Uh, just being one that I downloaded from Artlist. Throw that on the timeline, let's go back. We need to include a photo in this video as well. Um, let's go into our assets folder, click on photos, import that, voila. Photo folders in here and look at that. We're all nice and organized with all these assets in here. Click on here, we wanna pull this photo in for the end or something, I don't know. So here's our very well thought out timeline. Project's good to go. Um, it's everything that we dreamed it would be. So we go to the export screen and what you're going to want to do here is make sure that 
you set the export to where you want it to. Right now it's set to project files because that's just where we put the project. But uh, let's go in there and let's select our exports folder first and then boom, that way it's not getting cross whatever with the, with the other uh, folder. So let's name it one and that's generally what you want to do is you'll name things um, instead of just exporting something as final because it's going to be it's going to turn into final final and then this is for sure the final final version of the for sure the final and so it's just going to keep doing that just title it whatever you want and then one and then two and three and four and so on that's going to help the clutter as well match the source render maximum depth render quality all that good stuff uh, and let's export you can also send it to media uh, to the media queue um, that's generally what I do. But for the sake of this video, we're just gonna export here and I will see you in about two minutes. And just like that, our project is exported. And again, you can do this as many times as you want. Um, you really only have to set the location the one time and then you can be pretty automatic with your exports uh, and just crank out, you know, however many renditions you need to until your project's perfect. But this ends up being how a lot of my projects look with these folders, with this workflow. Um, it works pretty well for me now. I went through a lot of different um, variations and a lot of other discipline sort of practices to just make sure, like I said, when you're downloading a bunch of things, because you can organize it as much as you want, but uh, when you're working on these projects where you're downloading all these assets and all these music stuff, um, just m take the time to make sure you download them and drag them into this project folder and where they need to be because it's gonna make your life a whole lot easier. You'll have to go back into your project and so like say you just downloaded some new music, go back into your music folder, double click import from the, the music folder and find that new song that you added. It's going to take a little bit extra time but it's gonna make your life a whole lot easier especially once you're done with the project Storing it like that is going to be way easier uh, than dealing with all these assets that you downloaded that are just like all over the place. Well, there you go, guys. A very simple, easy way to organize your project files. And again, it's definitely something I neglected in the early parts of my freelance and video work. So the quicker you can get in the habit of making sure all your project files are organized like this, um, the better things are going to go for you. And believe me, there's going to be projects where you're just kind of like, running and gunning and downloading all these assets and you know throwing them in the project because you need to get it done at a certain time or whatever and that's okay um, but just the more you can get disciplined about um, putting things in the right spots you're definitely going to see a boost in efficiency that way as well so it's not always about just getting things in and out as quick as you can um, organization goes a long long way regardless i hope you guys got something out of this video I hope you learned something new that is the goal with my channel hopefully teaching you guys how to navigate this whole video and photo creation world got plenty more videos planned in the future hopefully one more this week as well but until then get out there and create something yourself i'll see you in the next one